Well, good morning, everyone, good morning. and welcome uh, to this, the uh, fourth Sunday in the season of Advent uh, worship service, and we're so happy that you could be here and be a part of our worship as we join our voices together in praising our Savior and our King, Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking at our uh, gospel lesson today. We're going to focus on that on this uh, particular Sunday in Advent. And it's the account of the familiar, I think probably to most of you, if not all of you, uh, the account where the angel comes to Mary and uh, tells her that uh, he has some great news. She is going to be the mother of the promised uh, Messiah. But you know, even more important than him being the promised son of David is that he is also the son of the Most High. And that's going to be very significant for uh, all of us, and we're going to explore that further. Under that theme, we are the Lord's servants. So again, we're using uh, the, abbrevi the abbreviated version of Rite 2 uh, on page 60, but we'll begin with the opening hymn, Hymn 109, Hark the Glad Sound. <laughs> So we turn then to page 60 in your hymnal as we continue with the invocation, page 60. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, as you come in today, you've probably noticed that we have relit uh, the first three candles. We had uh, the candle of hope, the candle of peace, and then the candle of joy, and now we have lit the uh, last candle on our Advent wreath, uh, the surrounding candles, I should say, and that is uh, referred to often as the candle of love. And we, uh, we uh, know that Jesus demonstrated his uh, self-giving love in his ministry as our good shepherd. Um, he didn't have to do that. That was all a part of his uh, amazing grace. We also know that in this season of Advent, it's not only a time for repentance, which we do emphasize, but it's also a time of kindness and of uh, thinking of others and sharing with others, especially the good news of Jesus Christ. So uh, with the love candle, we uh, place an emphasis there on uh, loving one another just as God has loved each of us by giving us his most precious gift, and that, of course, being his son, Jesus. From the book of Deuteronomy, we find these words. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial 
and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. And from the Gospel of John, we hear Jesus declare, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And so we pray. Teach us to love, dear Lord, and may we always remember to put you first as we follow uh, in your son's footsteps, that we may know your love and that we may display it clearly in our daily lives. And as we prepare for our celebration of Jesus' birth, also fill our hearts with love for all sinners in this world, that they all may come to know your love and the one whom you have sent, your Son and our Savior. Amen. And so we continue then, we go back to page 60 as we continue with the confession of sin. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. We continue then at the bottom of page 61. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Therefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, you have given your only begotten Son to die for us. Have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only begotten Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To all who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this unto us, O Lord. Amen. We continue with the Gloria Patri on page 62. be to God on high.
The Lord be with you. And so let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We now turn to the written Word of God uh, with our scripture lessons, which are printed on the back of your bulletin. And this morning we begin with the Old Testament lesson, 2 Samuel chapter 7, beginning with verse 8. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I look it, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. This is the word of our Lord. Our epistle lesson is taken from Paul's letter to the Christians there in Rome, chapter 16, beginning with verse 25. And Paul writes, Now to him who was able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden from long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God be glory forever, through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of our Lord.
And so today's gospel lesson is taken from Luke's gospel, chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. And as I've already alluded to, this will serve then as the text for our sermon today. So I invite you to rise for this gospel reading. So Luke records for us, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the gospel of our risen Lord. Let us now confess our Christian faith as expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed. You'll find that on page 69 of your hymnal. Page 69. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue now with our uh, sermon hymn, hymn 110, uh, but we're singing verses 1 through 4. Verses 1 through 4.
May the grace, peace, and mercy of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, along with our gracious Father in heaven, be with each and every one of you. Amen. So as I mentioned just a moment ago, our gospel lesson that we just read will serve as our text. And so before we begin with the sermon, let us pray. Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, dear fellow believers, as we take a few moments this morning to focus on our gospel lesson, I want again, once again mention or reiterate to you Mary's response to that angel. She said to the angel, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. We want to keep that in the back of our minds as we look at this text today. Now, if any of you are familiar with the movie Back to the Future, you know that it's about a, a teenager. I believe it's set in the early 80s, maybe 86 or 85, 84, something like that. And he goes back in time to 1955. And he's there in his hometown, and he recognizes a few things that look familiar. The courthouse is there. The clock is running because it hasn't been struck by lightning yet. But he notices also that are, there are some things that are different. But what really catches his eye at one point is he sees this car pull into the gas station, and a bell rings. And out come four uniformed employees and one is washing the windshield, one's checking the oil, other one's checking the tire, and the other one is filling the car with gas. Some of you, I'm sure, can remember those days. Others, you're too young. You don't remember. Maybe you saw it in a movie, right? Well, we called that kind of a gas station full service, didn't we? Whatever happened to full service? Some say that it became a thing of the past during the oil crisis of the 1970s. Customers were willing to give up full service if it meant cheaper gas at the pump. Because remember, it was going up to over a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty. Others say that customers didn't want to wait the extra 10 minutes and wanted to pump their own gas so that they could be in and out and on their way lickety split. But it isn't just gas stations today, is it? I mean, just stop and think about how many things have gone from full service to self-service over the years. And that list just keeps growing. And for the most part, we've become a society that doesn't like to wait. Now at the same time, we know that good things come to those who wait, right? Well, God's promise of the Savior is a prime example of that. For thousands of years, God's people had been waiting for that promise of a Savior to be fulfilled. That promise that he made to Adam and Eve all the way back in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. And it was that very promise that he kept reminding his people about through prophet after prophet after prophet. And finally, as the Apostle Paul tells us in his letter to the Galatians, when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Now that's an important revelation right there because by nature we aren't children of God. I know just about everybody says we're all God's children, but that's not exactly true. Sin broke that relationship. So now for everyone from Adam on, by nature we are lost and condemned creatures. And it really does all get tied back directly to our sins. Sins like the times that we haven't always been patient with others. Times when we've been more focused serving only ourselves 
rather than serving God and others. And we really could be here all day, could we not? If we wanted to try to list all of our sins, we'd need lots of paper. And the reality is this. Our sin is what makes us deserving of hell. The eternal torment of hell should have been our fate. But it wasn't. And it won't be, praise God, because of Jesus. Thousands of years after Adam and Eve fell into sin, and we, of course, all inherited that sin, God fulfilled His promise to send a Savior. And it started out with a visit of an angel to a girl named Mary. Imagine just for a moment what that must have been like. I mean, you're going about your, your daily business, maybe you're cleaning house, maybe you're getting dinner ready, and all of a sudden there is an angel standing right there in your living room. And that angel speaks to you and says, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And then our text goes on to say, as we maybe would expect, that Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel is quick, isn't he, to calm her down. He says, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be uh, called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. I'm guessing that if that happened to you or me, it'd probably leave us speechless, right? But Mary had a question and she asked the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered it by saying, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. This would all take place supernaturally. Now what we oftentimes call this is the incarnation, meaning that Jesus is both 100% God and 100% man at the same time. Don't worry if you can't wrap your brain completely around that because we really can't. There's nothing in this world you and I can relate to that's 100% one thing and 100% another. But we believe it because that's what the scriptures proclaim and reveal to us. Now, we want to be careful that we don't confuse this true teaching of Scripture with a false teacher teaching, excuse me, known as the Immaculate Conception. Because the Immaculate Conception says that also the Virgin Mary was without sin. But we know that that contradicts what the Scriptures say. In fact, it contradicts what Mary herself says in her song of praise, which is recorded there in Luke chapter 1, in what we call the Magnificat or Mary's song. Listen to what she says in verse 46. She says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God. Now catch this. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Now, if Mary was without sin, she wouldn't need a Savior. But you see, she knew that she too was sinful and that she too needed a Savior. That's why she is so happy. She has a Savior too, just like you and I are in need of a Savior. And the true teaching of the Incarnation teaches us that the Son of God also became the Son of Man in that person of Jesus Christ. Paul brings this out in his letter to the Colossians when he says, in Christ, all the fullness of the deity, in other words, God lives in bodily form. Now, why? 
What's the purpose of that? Why, why did Jesus need to be true God? Because that's what he was, of course. But at the same time, true man. Well, he needed to be true man to be born under God's law. Remember, he's going to be our substitute. And he needed to be true God in order to keep God's law perfectly because no one else on this earth could. He needed to be true man in order to suffer and die on that wooden cross in our place. And he needed to be true God in order to give his death universal worth and value, touching all mankind, past, present, and even in the future. As the psalmist once wrote, no one can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for them. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough. No payment is ever enough except for one. In truth, the payment of the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, as Peter wrote in his letter, or as John the Baptist said of Jesus, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is that one. Jesus is the servant, the ultimate servant, who did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, when it comes to living the perfect life that God demands, see, self-service, it just won't do. Because try as we might, with all of our power, all of our will, all of our whatever, Try as we might, we by ourselves simply cannot do it. That's why we need the full service that God provides for us in Jesus because he's the only one who took on the uniform of human flesh and went to work on our behalf, following all of God's law in thought, word, and deed perfectly. He's the only one who washes away all the sins from the windows of our lives. And then he clothes us with his, the, the uniform of his own righteousness. We wear that robe spiritually and it covers every sin. And he's the only one who fills our tanks with faith, worked by the Holy Spirit through God's word and sacrament and then promises to give us all that we need for this life until one day he welcomes us into the mansions of our heavenly home. You see, dear people, faith in Jesus, it changes everything. It changes our hearts, it changes our lives, it changes our eternities, and it changes our attitudes when it comes to serving him and serving others. And as we talked about last week, it changes our feelings of, I have to, to a feeling of, I want to. I want to serve you, Lord. And in doing that, also serving others. And even Mary, as I mentioned earlier, she had the, the privilege of serving God as being the mother of the promised Savior. And that, too, was a gift of God's grace. Just think of the many, many gifts of grace that God has given to all of us. John writes in 1 John 3, he says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God? And that is what we are, he says. So fellow children of God, we are in truth and in reality, the Lord's servants. And may Mary's word continue to be our words as well. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And may God forgive us for all the times that We've been more focused on serving ourselves only instead of serving God 
and serving others. And you know what? We can be thankful and have peace of mind that He has forgiven us through His innocent life and His horrific death and His glorious resurrection from the grave. And because of that, may His love for us lead us to love those around us. And may His forgiveness to us lead all of us to forgive those who have wronged us. May His kindness to us lead us to be kind to others. And may His service to us lead us to serve others, knowing that in doing so, we're actually serving our Lord. Now that's echoed by the Apostle Paul when he tells us there in his letter to the Corinthians. He says, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And see, dear ones, one of the greatest things that you and I and all believers can do is to serve Christ and to share Christ with those around us. And as this year is coming to an end and as we will be planning and working together in the new year, we want to do just that, to serve and to share so that everyone will know of his amazing love. Now, for just a moment, going back to that story about Mary and Joseph. They were in for quite a journey, weren't they? Nine months after that angel had appeared to Mary, they would be making that long trip to Bethlehem. And they wouldn't be packing the minivan. Rather, they would make the trip by foot or by riding on a donkey. And they wouldn't be booking a room either by getting onto Priceline or Hotel.com. Rather, they arrived in this little town only to find that every place was full. The only place that they could find room was a stable where the animals were being kept. And the Bible reveals to us that it was while they were there that Jesus was born. And Mary took that little baby and wrapped him in strips of cloth and they placed him in a manger. No cute little onesies to dress him up in. No warm little crib to lay him down in. Just a feeding trough for the animals. And that would serve, if you just stop and think about this for a moment, that was the very first bed for the king of kings and the creator of all things. And it wasn't by accident. That was all part of God's plan. Now, why? Why did he do this? Why did he go to these lengths? Well, it's really pretty simple, and yet it's mind-blowing at the same time. You ready? He did it for the likes of you. He did it for the likes of me. He did it for all people, all sinners, so that we could be with him forever in the glories of heaven. That was the purpose. That was the rescue mission. Ponder that, just like Mary did. Think about that in your hearts, not only this Christmas, but that's a good time, but always. Think about that the next time there are opportunities presented to you to serve the Lord. And don't think about, well, what's in it for me? And don't get upset if people don't say thank you to you. Because the day is coming when your thank you is going to come from Jesus himself. And that too will be a gift of his amazing grace. You know, in a way, we could say that we've already received our full reward because the full and free forgiveness of all of our sins and that eternal life in heaven 
is ours right now by the grace of God through faith, that faith that he gave to our hearts as a gift in Christ Jesus. Everything else, <laughs> that's just icing on the cake. And so, dear ones, may the full service of Jesus to us always motivate our joyful service to him in return. Amen. Please rise for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds firmly planted in the risen and the returning Christ. Amen. You may be seated. So again, we just uh, invite you to make your presence known through our cards that we have here and always uh, letting you know that if there are any changes to addresses or phone numbers, anything like that that Linda may need, go ahead and write that on there. And um, if uh, you have a prayer request that you'd like me to be praying about during the week, put that there too because Linda always uh, gets that to me. Then when you have that filled out, you can place it in the offering plate in the back at the end of our service. And so let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, King of glory, who in great lowliness came to this earth to bear our sins and to suffer our hell and to die our death, we offer to you from our heart of hearts our greatest thanks for your promise to come again, not only as the bearer of our sins, but as our deliverer to take us one day to heaven. Help us look with longing to that great day of power when we will see you face to face and look upon your glory. May the promise of your coming drive sorrow from our hearts and fill us with great joy. Lord, grant that when we stand before your throne on that last day, that we will all joyfully hear your invitation to inherit the kingdom prepared for us from the foundation of the world. We pray, too, though, that you would keep us from ever backsliding so that we do not lose hold of our eternal life, but that you would grant us a rich measure of the Holy Spirit and his amazing grace. And may he keep us from putting our trust in anyone or anything else but you only to save us. And may he keep us from becoming indifferent toward your word and sacraments. May he keep our hearts filled with faith our minds filled with thoughts of heaven and our eyes trained to watch for your sudden reappearing. Through the Spirit, empower us to demonstrate with wholesome and honorable Christian lives that we truly are God's children by faith. And grant to those whose faith has become weak and sluggish a repentant readiness at your last coming. We ask now, Lord, that you would hear the prayers and the petitions that come from the hearts of your dear people. Dearest Lord, you are our ever-present help in times of trouble. And we implore your mercy in behalf of my uncle, Uncle Dick, Richard Kahn, who is gravely ill at this time. Let your light and your warmth of your amazing grace shine on him and drive away the shadows of doubt and fear from his heart through the sure knowledge that he is your forgiven child through Christ. We also lift up to you his dear wife, Aunt Jeanette, and ask your blessing on her and all of those whose hearts are heavy. Fill them with the joy of knowing that you have him tenderly in your care and will provide the needed relief. Take away their sadness and replace it with the joy of knowing 
that you are in control and that you have him securely in your loving hands. Abide with him, Lord, and with all of us as we journey through this world of sin and sorrow until by your grace we enter those eternal joys and the glory of your heaven. We pray, too, that you would forgive all unbelief and doubt that may cling to us as well as every failure to live a godly life. Forgive us for neglecting the blessed privilege of prayer as well as neglecting to offer you all the praise due your holy name. Do restore the joy of salvation to us through the pardon you so graciously bestow and through the confidence that you give us that we are heirs of salvation. Gracious Lord, our heart's desire is that all people may share the glorious privilege of knowing you in truth and believing in you by faith. To this end, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we become more diligent and skillful in sharing your gospel to those around us. And let the word we share not return empty, but accomplish your good and gracious will, preparing people for that great day of your coming again to take all of us to our heavenly home. We ask all these things knowing that our Lord and Savior, as our Lord and Savior, you can and you will hear and act upon our prayers. Amen. And now we pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This time then we would have you turn to page 76 in your hymnal as we continue with the Sanctus. Page 76. Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come now to the Lord's table.
And now may his body and his blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true saving faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. And now with believing hearts receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his peace. Well, again, a big thank you to all of you uh, for worshiping with us today. We always, uh, our prayer is we hope that you have been strengthened in your faith through uh, the proclamation of God's word and the partaking of his holy supper, and also that you find encouragement and comfort in the fellowship of uh, fellow believers. Thank you, Nancy, for providing the music for our worship service today, and thank you, Mary, for uh, the special music uh, that you offer as well. Uh, both of you, you enhance uh, our worship uh, through your sharing of your gifts. By way of announcements, no confirmation this week or next week, uh, the, the Christmas break. Uh, please join us, however, uh, this Thursday uh, for our annual uh, Christmas candlelight uh, service, and that'll be at 7 o'clock. And then, if you can, join us on Friday for Christmas Day. Uh, that service will be at uh, 9 a.m., and just a little reminder, they are different services and different sermons, so you don't have to worry or think that it's just a repeat of the night before. So I expect everybody here. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, so no Bible class or Sunday school next Sunday as well, but um, then we'll, we'll pick back up when we, uh, well, it's at the end of this month, isn't it? That we, no, it isn't. We'll pick back up and, <laughs> I looked at Linda, the, the one who really knows what's going on here. Yeah, we pick back up in January. A uh, big thank you to everybody who donated toward our uh, auction or uh, uh, participated in it. It was a big success, and I thought that I heard that everyone is invited to Fritz Miller's house for fried chicken because he won the air fryer. So I don't know what time you want us there, Fritz, but it might be pretty soon because we're all getting hungry. All right, don't forget your year-end reports. I know we got Christmas and everything, but keep that in mind, and I know that Linda would appreciate it uh, as uh, soon as possible, at least by January 10th, so it can be put into a report, and our, our goal is to have those reports done so that the annual report can be on that back table a couple of weeks ahead of our uh, voters meeting, which will be at the end of January, and you'll have time to look at it and read it and bring your questions or whatever that you like uh, to that meeting. Don't forget to check your mailboxes in the hallway. Okay, try to do that today if you can. Uh, there is a new altar flowers chart up on the furnace room uh, door. And Roger Dorman, I think you brought some evergreen vowels. Is that what you were calling them? Okay. And uh, so there's a couple boxes of them in the entryway of the um, fellowship hall. So if you would uh, like uh, any of those, they're free for the taking, or you can give me a dollar. Whichever, which one ever you want to do. But uh, they're in the hallway there. So, any other announcements that need to be, be, need to be made? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we had a, it was a big success, but there are still a few items left in the fellowship hall from the uh, silent auction. If you would like to take a look at them uh, before you go, and they'll probably be disappearing pretty soon, right? So, all right. Well, be sure to... Uh, Greet one another in any way that you can that maintains that safe social distancing. But uh, above all, may God bless your daily walk with him.